I see we have Miss Turnbull, the guardian ad litem in this case. Good afternoon. See Miss Kennedy mm -hmm. uh, and Mr. Baldwin responding or representing Miss Kennedy, the uh, respondent in this case. And I don't see the petitioner, Mr. Hanna. The, I can say you're under, with the, go ahead. Yes, Mr. Sorry. I, I was going to say, go ahead. Um, to date, um, Mr. Hanna's participation has been spotty at best. He had appeared late for the initial adequate cause hearing after he'd been found by the court, um, had appearance issues on a temporary order, did not appear for the pretrial uh, readiness or trial confirmation dockets. In, in this matter to date. I do know Ms. Turnbull informed me that he had made contact with her uh, maybe two days ago, indicating he intended to appear, uh, but I'm not altogether surprised that he isn't here despite that indication. I did ahead, speak with him this morning. Um, he indicated he intended to appear as of this morning. I forwarded him the email link for the trial, but that's all I know. I guess Mr. Baldwin, it, do we I'm, I'm willing to give it a few minutes before we get started normally if someone's trying to get into a hearing I'll hear from a judicial assistant within a few minutes um, so why don't we it's 104 let's go off the record and let's check back in at 10 after and see Thank if we just. and if I've heard anything I'll update all the parties and I would indicate to the court, if he's not present, our initial plan setting it for a half day, even though it initially was a one day trial, was the anticipation it would just be an offer of proof. So if he's not here, uh, we would like to proceed with an offer of proof um, and, and resolve the matter today, just so the court's aware of, of our intention. I I think that's appropriate given, well, given the notice, the service and the lack of response, I think that's appropriate. So Thank you, Jeff. we'll give him a little over five minutes to see if we hear that he's attempting to get in or to get here and otherwise we'll proceed. Thank you, Judge. Zero nine. Still do not have anyone in the waiting room and I proactively called um, the administrative staff that we have here today to check to see if anybody's called in or re uh, reporting any difficulties to get into any Zoom sessions and we have not received one of those phone calls for today. Uh, so... I am ready to proceed. I will let the parties know that in preparation for this case, I've reviewed everything that's been filed in the last two years. So uh, I know primarily we're dealing with the, um, the 2023 filings, but I, I've reviewed everything. I've also reviewed the guardian ad litem's report in this case. So for what that's worth. So Mr. Baldwin, go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. Um, uh, to further the court in the manner of writing an offer of proof, my intention is functionally to um, rely on the evidence contained in the guardian litem report. Um, if you'd like to swear the guardian litem in, I can ask a few questions, but I'm also, if you, the Honor has had a chance to review and, and read it, that is the substance of the parenting plan that we proposed in our trial aid. Uh, essentially, this case began because Ms. Kennedy had been uh, informed by members of Mr. Hanna's family that there were issues um, ongoing. She, in her petition for adequate cause to modify the parenting plan, addressed concerns with use and um, criminal behavior occurring in his home. The guardian ad litem in her report spoke to Presley, and um, between that and the information she reviewed that are exhibits 101, 102, and uh, 103 of our trial exhibits um, form the basis, I believe, of, of their opinion. And speaking with Presley, identified that during her time with her dad, um, last visit approximately two years ago, um, that she observed behaviors that subsequently became clear to her to be related to drug behavior um, that Presley had indicated that her dad would be in the bathroom for hours, sleeping all day, lose track of time, leave in the middle of the night. And that subsequently she could relate back to experiences seeing him 
um, engaging with what she believed to be marijuana, as well as remembering seeing him given lots of shots in his leg. Um, Mr. Hanna is currently subject to a minor guardianship case in Clark County, Washington, uh, where the guardian Bladim Sherry Farr had been in contact with Ms. Turnbull. Um, a UA was ordered in that case that was done in April, collected April 25, 2023, showing positive in very large amounts of amphetamines and methamphetamine, um, that his behavior is consistent with currently being in the midst of a fairly significant drug addiction. The declaration for the minor guardianship are Exhibit 102 and declaration by his parents and their attachments at our Exhibit 103 show at the beginning of the year the significant issues that were ongoing for Mr. Hanna, resulting in his home being unsafe. The court in Clark County um, has a temporary guardianship. That's my understanding. Testimony would have been that it has not been finalized yet, but it is ongoing. Uh, Mr. Hanna also has pending criminal matters out of Cowles County District Court and has active warrants for those matters. So despite his non-appearance today, given that he has warrants, I had some concern that he, he would likely not appear regardless. Um, so the GAO report, Your Honor, having reviewed that, establishes significant concerns for the safety of this child were she to have any visitation um, with her father, given, again, the current restraints in place in Clark County and the minor guardianship, that he's not to come within 500 feet of the home or girl's residence, um, that from the parents is, again, consistent in the pleadings attached. Um, his mother had indicated her son's not able to parent, that it's difficult. She had to set boundaries. Um, the priority is taking care of the children because he basically needs to take care of himself first. The recommendation um, from the GAL, as I believe outlined in the proposed parenting plan, are findings of limitations due to abandonment. Um, he also has an ongoing chemical dependency issue that is affecting his ability to parent. We did also put um, abusive use of conflict using the children. And we believe that was requested by our client because of a pattern by Mr. Hanna to not participate in court proceedings and then um, essentially waste court time and Ms. Kennedy's resources to attempt to undo them. When he didn't appear for the finding of adequate cause or when he appeared for the uh, entry of the protection order, no contact order here. He filed motions for reconsideration and, and has a history of filing notices of intent to appeal um, when he does not participate in the proceeding until the very end to try and delay or stall and then further attempts to log um, Ms. Kennedy in, in litigation. Um, recommendation that he have no contact with Presley until he undergoes a full substance abuse evaluation with collateral input from our client. Um, adheres to treatment recommendations and provide documentation of compliance and that after 30 days of sobriety and compliance with treatment, he can petition the court to address visitation um, without any need for adequate cause. I think that'd be appropriate under the circumstances. He's continued to not participate in the case. Aside from very recent contact with Ms. Turnbull about being here, um, he hasn't participated in the jail process with either guardian ad litem and appears to continue to be in the thralls of an active addiction that's affecting his ability to parent. Can you, and I'm sorry, I was following along, Mr. Baldwin, you said that there was um, a trigger if you were able to do all the things requested without uh, another court hearing. Is that outlined in the proposed parenting plan? Uh, let me find it, Your Honor. What we had indicated, and it may need um, a clarification, what it says is, uh, that was in the Guardian Latin's recommendation that was our intention as to how it would read. Um, get a substance use evaluation with collateral contact, comply with treatments. Um, I think it was inadvertently omitted. If the court would like to interlineate or have me do a follow-up with the language specifically stating that after 30 days of documented compliance, um, he, father is able to petition the court to reinstate visits or for reunification. I believe the guardian allowed him specifically addressing reunification counseling as a potential need given the child's age and what she identifies having observed in dad's home, um, but that that would be done with the court. Our client has also requested uh, a psych evaluation parental risk assessment 
Um, so that's in our, our proposed order as well. Um, do you have questions of the GAO? Only if the court would like, Your Honor, um, testimony in, in addition to what's contained in the GAO report and basically my offer of proof of the contents of those materials. I don't want to waste the jail's time. I understand she also had filed a motion regarding compensation because Mr. Hanna did not pay his portion of the uh, private pay. My client paid hers in full. And though the jail hasn't gone over the $3,000 cap, she has spent more time than what my client has paid. Um, so with that being on in front of the court, I don't want to, to use waste any time unnecessarily. Okay, so I see the motion and the itemized billing with a due balance due of 479.17. Does that include today? That does not include today. Okay. So if you, uh, I'll approve that to be county pay. If you want to uh, update it with the time for today and, and pro provide that with an order, I'll sign off on that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Turnbull. And then, um, I did notice uh, in my review this case, and I did probably go back a little further than necessary, but there was a, a motion for uh, adequate cause, and then there was a request to reconsider. It seems to, I would, I would call it um, gamesmanship, but I, I frankly, it, it seems more uh, for lack of a better term, grasping at straws. So there does seem to be some uh, delayed efforts or de delaying efforts and then to kind of try to swoop in um, and fix things that request was denied. Now we're sitting on that request, a temporary, or excuse me, there's been a temporary restraining order for a significant period of time, no contact with the child. All of those things are um, obviously very concerning to the court and if he doesn't have an ability to show up regularly for court dates, and uh, there's a concern that that you know being able to show up regularly for a child, which is really necessary, uh, and he's shown that that doesn't work out either. Uh, I have reviewed the parenting plan that's been provided. I do think the 191 factors of abandonment, substance abuse, and abuse of use of conflict are appropriate. I will. Uh, put in those limiting factors and adopt the parenting plan as presented, but for those, um, the language that we just discussed, Mr. Baldwin, uh, that if he gets the assessments and is in compliance for a period of time, uh, that he can petition the court for, and, and I'm going to say, based on a, our uh, brown bag meeting yesterday, uh, and I don't know that you were able to attend that, uh, Charlotte Rosen's office is willing to do a reunification, reunification assessment to determine if that's appropriate at no cost to parties. Um, and so I, I would I essentially, he can petition the court for a reunification assessment if he's okay. within compliance within 30 days is the language I'd like you to uh, add in to that. Um, the only thing I have is the three hole punched unless did you submit one to the. I, I can't say for certain your honor. Um, we, uh, my assistant was no longer with her office as of Friday. So we've had one assistant doing everything. A, a clean copy for you to sign may not have been provided. So I will just add that language. Um, after 30 days of compliance of full compliance, able to, uh, petition court for reunification assessment. Is that correct? Yes. And that's includes, and I, I will adopt the, the psych evaluation. Um, hmm. Hmm. The only other question. Hold I on have, one second. Someone just popped in to the waiting room and it could be the petitioner. So one moment and we'll admit this person. Um, Mr. Baldwin, you listed a couple witnesses. Yes, Your Honor. In, uh, I'll be honest, this was supposed to be a one day trial um, because it was compressed due to court availability. Um, my only witnesses would be Ms. Kennedy and Ms. Turnbull if we proceed today. Um, okay. 
that was one of the issues to try and accommodate the shorter time frame. Friday was the only available day and I had a special set matter on this morning that the uh, court administrator was not keen to move. So this was the only slot available. I just, there was an, another person showed up in the waiting room and I didn't know if it was associated with, it's not a name that I recognize and okay. is not listed in this, but I. Understood judge. No, this, the, the extent of the presentation we go forward today. It appears to the petitioner is logged in, but it doesn't appear they have good service. Um, they first logged in 20, almost 25 minutes late to uh, the date and time set for trial. Still not getting a full connection, it appears. Um, a little frustrated parties are required per our local court rules uh, regarding zoom to sign in uh, at least 15 minutes before the trial confirm contact information with superior court administration in case there's a um, loss of connection and frankly the petitioner in this case wasn't even at trial setting and I don't think has done any of those things and was clearly 25 minutes late. I don't know what's going on with the audio. I'm assuming that this is the petitioner given the name listed. Um, it's my position, Your Honor, my argument would be given the fact that above the court rules, as well as the fact the court had basically already ruled adopting the proposed parenting plan with my one minor modification prior to him attempting to appear on Zoom with no other contact, that the court should effectively maintain the order and um, grant the parenting plan proposed uh, with the modification so ordered. Well, I, I, I agree with Mr. Baldwin. I think I frankly already got to that point that I adopted the parenting plan with that modification. I was just frankly going through for the record um, and indicating out loud. So decision making would be obviously to the respondent and I'm adopting that plan. I do see a proposed uh, child support worksheet was, um, are you requesting uh, to change child support in this case? Um, we or provided it, Your Honor. I, I don't know that we have the information from any newer statements regarding income? I thought my staff went off of the prior and what we proposed, but I can confirm that, Judge. Um, the it notes that it was well. What I read in your brief was that they were uh, that there was a my staff supposed to do a cost of living increase from the prior order, but okay, I, I I don't. All I see is the um, a child support worksheet. I don't see anything else. Understood, so, Your Honor. Um, but the parenting plan I, I've adopted at this point. There is another individual with the same name in the waiting room, which I just admitted and says they're joining, but um, not exactly sure. Uh, I will note for the record there is now a person named Rihanna in the waiting room. That's why I asked about any witnesses. So, um, yes, it's Kennedy. I believe Brianna is his most current girlfriend. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> I guess, is there any other requests before the court at this point in time? I don't believe so, Your Honor. The anti harassment order, the no contact order that was entered. I believe it was entered for 12 months. Um, so I don't know that a, a new one is needed um, at this point. It's like May, the court entered the no contact order, um, starts immediately, ends 12 months or on date blank. So I don't think there's anything else before the court. Okay, that's where I was looking at. It's, it's a temporary, but it's a one year temporary. Okay. I, I believe so, Your Honor. I don't know if that was signed temporary in, in, in error because it was for 12 months or, but either way, it, it has a 12 month duration and Ms. Kennedy can petition for it to be entered for, for longer before its expiration. 
I can hear you. Um, so is this other person that's logged in is Lauren, Hannah, the fourth that's trying to connect to audio. Is that your, another device of yours? Um, I don't think I got in that phone yet. Oh, maybe. Um, sorry about that. No, it's okay. I'll just remove them if that's, if oh. that's not you. Yes, All right. You. All right. So, uh, Mr. Hannah, we started at one o'clock. And uh, you were not here, so I've already made a ruling to adopt the parenting plan that was submitted um, by the respondent in this case. And uh, I think there was service upon you of that proposed parenting plan. I don't have the date right in front of me. So I, um, I have adopted that parenting plan at this point in time. Will it be the one that was recently served to me? I, I, I received certified mail. Um, Something the day before yesterday was it was a big packet that I haven't got to go all the way through yet. And I, I had a better court date yesterday, and um, I just I just can't keep up as well as been. And uh, so I'm not sure if I if I have the right one. But, um, yeah, I with the with the protection orders and stuff that she gets in place, um, I'm not sure what the parenting plan um, really um, says. Different, anyways. Well, I'm happy to, to go through what the parenting plan says. Uh, and I don't know, Mr. Baldwin, was this, would this have been what he received within the last couple of days or would this have been sent over prior to that? You're muted. Sorry, Judge. It was sent out Monday. Um, so he should have had it before yesterday. But Okay. So um, at this point, I'm making some 191 findings uh, regarding... Yeah. Uh, substance abuse, abusive use of conflict and abandonment, mm -hmm. ordering that uh, in order for you to have any visitation or the potential for visitation, you would have to do a substance abuse assessment by a state approved agency uh, that allows for collateral contact uh, with uh, the respondent in this case. Uh, Mr. Baldwin, I just noticed that it says with the petitioner, so that may be a typo there. I, I see that as well, Your Honor. I think it was because um, she made the motion for the adequate cause, but is not the original petitioner. That's why it was an error. I can fix that typo as well. All right. Uh, question, yeah. I'm going to tell you what it says, and you can ask a question. Uh, review all pot the the um, review drug tests, the ten panel uh, hair follicle that the um, you comply with treatment as directed if you are ordered into treatment. Uh, or treatment is suggested as part of that evaluation, that all your compliance reports be submitted, uh, that you obtain a psychological evaluation with a parental risk assessment. Uh, and they're suggesting through Dr. Poppleton, again, with collateral contact with the respondent in this case. And once all those reports are submitted and you are in compliance with all of the recommendations for a 30-day period, you can request uh, an evaluation for reunification since it's been such a significant period of time since you've seen the child. Uh, decision making would be given to the respondent in this case. She would be the custodian until you get those uh, things completed. And then we would discuss any visitation uh, after that. And after the reunification assessment is completed. Uh, the rest of the plan is pretty much uh, standard plan, and uh, I'm not going to go over all the minutia of the plan, but uh, that's what the court is ordering at this point in time. So you had a question. Yeah, um, I, I don't know to begin. I, I am. This is really not good for my daughter at all. I um, I, I I'm, I'm a little confused on the abandonment. Um, idea but because what originally happened was um I, well i don't know if there's ever a time i, I get to reply or, or have a response to this guy she, he said i was I sent out on monday or something but i, I couldn't respond to anything uh, possibly before that i i tried to part, partially it took me so long to get into the meeting was i thought i had everything set up to be able to show something on the, on the screen if i needed to because i have there's ample evidence the parental alienation has been so non-stop for years that i I am. Um, I and it's so textbook. I can I can show it. I just never get the opportunity to to, to show anybody. And um, this is torn my, my family apart. It's not just me. It's her little sisters and 
Uh, Presley is the most motherly figure that they have, quite frankly, and um, um, with their mom gone and, and, you know, everything, it's been, um, it's just destroyed my business, it destroyed my career, destroyed everything. And uh, all I wanted is to, to protect my daughter, that's all I've ever done. And um, right now she's um, alone in the wilderness, quite frankly. And uh, to hear that she's afraid of me is, is, is odd. I don't know that that's true, but she, I wanted to have her voice heard at, at some point. And I, I guess I haven't done um, um, I just am amazed that how this can go. The, the abusive use of litigation here has been so so profound. There's a reason I, I just I can't I can't function in the, in the midst of all of it. It's it's been absolutely destructive. And she got a protection order. The second one she got because she said I ignored my daughter all year after she got a year long protection order granted on the idea that I was threatening her, which never has occurred ever. She's threatened me for years, but. Uh, um, this case has a long history since 2000 and whenever I took her to court the first time, but uh, I raised a little girl and she knows better. So um, the ultimate is when the child believes something that occurred eventually that never occurred. And that's the, the sick twisted part of it. I, um, it's played on my family dynamics in an awful way. My father never got along anyway, but here we are um, with eventually when you get a piece of litigation through and it gets you some steam, I, I couldn't run a practice and, and keep my business going when she's just nothing but throwing darts at me. I think there's, I have an email from an ex that's threatening to call her if I don't if I call the police and report the, the assault that occurred, and that's what happened. I reported an assault, and here we are. So, um, my daughter was the target, and uh, it's um, I can prove all of it. I just never get a chance to do it. Uh, I never do. I didn't have a day in court for the protection order either. So uh, I was first on the docket, and I had Zoom issues. No go figure in my office. There's blood all over the walls, still. But that was that was a year and a half ago. First and foremost, secondly, you were served with this motion in April, and you filed absolutely nothing. The GAL yeah. reached out to you, asked yeah. for you to participate in an investigation. You ignored her and did not respond to her. It sounds like the only time you've contacted her is recently to find out about this trial date. So I'm, I'm really plan. sorry. I understand you're representing yourself. I'm talking now, uh, and I understand that this is, you know, affecting your relationship with your child, but to, for you to sit here and say that you're a victim and you didn't have an opportunity to respond to this is absolutely untrue. Absolutely untrue. It's true, but I know how the GAL works. They, they check out your house and your, you see that you're suitable and, and what you offer as parents and then your, they check you out and everything. And, and with what's gone on in my life with um, just trying to survive and get through this, I'm not going to lie, I was scared to death to contact the GAL. She's got me in a position that I've um, I've never been in and trying to get out of it is then um, I, I, I've still not seen a court date for the, the criminal charges that were brought on me by her. And uh, um, it, it's, 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 it's incredible. I've got three different lawyers jumping through the hoops has been um, nonstop. I mean, I, again, it's, it's, I have, I could show this in, in actual, anyone look at my text history, they would see what I mean, but it's, it's, I know that the process doesn't work that way. And I, I didn't think the jail would listen to me, quite frankly. It, it's um, the last one. It, it, they got a hold of me three weeks before the hearing. And so it was, um, it's not in this case, it's in my other twin daughter's case. And it's, it's been debilitating. I, I, can't, I can't, the PTSD that I experienced here, I've just now started going to see a counselor for it. And I should have done that a long time ago because it's, um, um, after a while, I get you. They wear on me. It's just, it's, uh, the stress level is unbearable. And, um, when you miss your little girl and, and you're only hearing that she's scared of you, she's scared of you. It's, it's, um, um, I'm the only one that's never threatened anybody. It doesn't make sense. It's just not in my character. It's not at all. She knows that, but you poison a child, you poison a child. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. I guess just for the record, given you, your honor, I think addressed a significant portion of it. Um, it was May 17th of this year, Mr. Hanna was in court when Commissioner Nelson set the case for trial week of August 14th with a pretrial July 25th and readiness August 8th. Mr. Hanna appeared at neither pretrial nor readiness and had ample opportunity to present evidence for the court to consider, not just was he late. He presented nothing during the entire period pending from the scheduling of the trial where he did appear to today's date. I just want that to also be on record. Thanks. That is true. That is true. And I, I thought it was next month. I really did. I thought it was, uh, I've had so many court dates again. It's straight. So I, um, I've had, you know, readiness hearings I've had, are, I think at least eight of them. And um, looking at evictions and things because it's so consuming, trying to just fight this stuff that 
eventually if they take your livelihood and everything else, it doesn't, you don't have any one thing to focus on. And I, I did miss that day. Um, and so I wasn't hurt the first time I couldn't get to see my, my child. And uh, the head injuries alone, I, I could speak to for an hour and a half from a neurologist, but um, I'll get to it. Uh, well, uh, at this point, uh, we were here for essentially a, a modification of the parenting plan. Uh, I've read everything that's been filed in this case, which unfortunately didn't include anything from the, the uh, original petitioner, Mr. Hanna, uh, and ultimately made a ruling prior to your late arrival, almost 30 minutes after the date court date started. So a way to get to, to submit things online by chance. Not I mean for future reference. I I can't just to get to Calis County is a nightmare because I don't have I don't have a driver's license and things now. So I, I, just, I, I, I unfortunately would have to direct you to the uh call the clerk's office because mm -hmm. there may be a way that they are accepting certain things either electronically or um by fax mm -hmm. or something, but I don't know what their rules are. So I can't I'm not gonna even venture a guess on that, but I would reach out to them if there's anything that you want to file. Last I checked, they, there wasn't. I just thought maybe there was another way, your honor, whatever, another route. But uh, no, they're they they get to control that part of it. So I would have to defer them. All right. Um, anything else, uh, Mr. Baldwin? No, your honor. I'll present the order for you to sign. Um, based on your ruling, and I did find it was in uh, Section 8B where my staff had put um, that there will be no visits or contact until full compliance with evaluations and treatment. We had put 90 days. I'll change that to 30 and add the language there as well about the reunification assessment, but I'll present that for your honor to sign ex parte uh, by Monday. Why is that? All right. So, um, Mr. Hanna, you'll get a copy of this parenting plan. It'll outline for you what you need to do in order to just get your uh, get to a reunification assessment, which uh, would hopefully, if things are going well, lead to visitation. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I, all right. Your Honor, this is the clerk. Can we yes. address the exhibits? Are they being withdrawn if they're not being used or? I'll withdraw my exhibits. We can uh, pick up the exhibit binder. I got time to review it so I can. All right. Um, All right. I will enter that order upon receipt. Thank you, Judge. All right. Good luck, everyone. Thank you.